Hello, my name's Anita Bentada. Thank you for inviting me and listening to my fearless story. So I started off in life fearful, at utterly terrified, so scared in a family of six and nobody was safe to be around because my siblings were children and they didn't know how to be with what was going on and so we didn't talk about what was going on and my parents didn't realise the harm they were doing by what they were saying and doing and it was just scary. I used to have nightmares all the time and I was bullied constantly at school. I never had friends and life was really tough and I felt very alone. But when I turned 16... Those hormones of becoming a teenager were just magic for me and I became a bit fearless and I ventured out on going out into environments for teenagers for having fun and I managed to find someone that I could go out with even though I'd had a whole life of being bullied and not having friends and I ended up meeting someone on a hot summer's day at the beach one day and the energy of being a teenager and finally meeting someone that I felt a connection to and felt a connection back to me led me to be fearless and I left home at 16 to be with him and I left school and I got a job and I was just full of excitement for going out into the world. And we were together for um, about four years and things were getting difficult because he had his own history from childhood of abuse and horror himself. And we didn't know, we weren't equipped how to be out in the world and things got tough. And we, in our young age, thought, mm, let's have a child. And having a child didn't help us to negotiate life and things just got worse. And I felt really sad because I wanted my little girl to have a better home environment. And we were just leading two separate lives. And everything I was doing to try and connect with him wasn't working. And I felt like I was a single mum and I didn't want my girl to grow up seeing her parents being so cold and distant in the same house. So I left with my two-year-old. And so that fearlessness in leaving with her was to give her something because I wasn't strong enough to want to give me something yet. But the thing was, I was so terrified of being out in the world. I could manage when I was in a relationship because someone else was there. But when I was on my own, the terror from childhood would just come flooding back and I just couldn't cope. It would just shut me down and was too overwhelming. And so it came to be New Year's Eve and I couldn't bear to be on my own because it wasn't long after I'd left. And my sister said, come to a party with her and her husband. And so I brought my little girl and I ended up getting stalked that night. And I couldn't say no, I just, in my way of saying no was I just want to be friends, but I wasn't interested in even that. But he just kept hounding me after the party as well as during the party. And I ended up being in a really violent relationship with him for nearly six years when I finally left with now two girls. And it was a lot for their sake of why I left why I finally came to realise that this was abusive because I was just in survival mode. And so I left and I went through about seven years of court to try and protect my two girls. So there was, I was pretty fearless because I wasn't going to give up. I had this promise to myself when I left that no way was he ever going to control me again. And no matter what was going on, if he was trying to do revengeful things and controlling things, I wasn't going to let him control my mind, my life choices, the safety of my girls. And I just kept fighting as best as I could to protect my girls and to help the three of us to heal. And so we were all in therapy because I'd reached rock bottom when I'd left the relationship with him. 
and I didn't ever want to go through something like that again and I wanted to be able to be there for my girls. So a lot of my fearlessness came out about wanting to protect my girls. But how did I really overcome it? It was through therapy and it wasn't the first therapist I saw. I kept having to go to another therapist and another therapist because they were well-meaning people but they didn't know how to help me beyond what I already knew. And then I finally found this fantastic way of working that changes the brain-body connections and resolves trauma. And so from going from being a terrified little girl, I am so courageous and fearless out in the world now. And I've learnt so much about myself because I'm not who I thought I was as a child. The identity that I had as a child wasn't my real self. It was my coping self. And through therapy and the support of that therapy enabling me to go out into the world and have lots of adventures enabled me to discover myself by doing lots of playful things and learning things and going back to school after I left at 16 and studying and working and traveling and taking risks and lots of adventures, um, trying lots of new things all the time, um, whether it's pole dancing or trekking in Nepal or you know selling my place and using some of that money so that I could go overseas for the first time. Um, lots of things and so what keeps me motivated is my passion for honesty because growing up as a little girl I used to listen to Billy Joel's song honesty is such a lonely word everyone is so untrue honesty is hardly ever heard and mostly what I need from you and that's what really stayed with me from childhood that everyone was pretending Everyone put on a nice smile as if it was good, but it was shocking. It was really shocking and scary. And so I'm all about let's be honest with each other. Let's say the whole conversation because my family couldn't recognize when I was in the abusive relationship to me, though I found out after I left, my sister used to leave my place and cry and my other sister told me just a few months ago and that was many many years ago that I was in the abusive relationship that my two sisters used to talk to each other but they wouldn't come to me and be honest and say hey you don't look good what's going on you don't look happy how can we help you they didn't know how to be honest with what was going on and I didn't know how to be honest because I had so much fear going on and Our whole family didn't know how to be honest. So what keeps me motivated is wanting to show my children and my grandchildren now how to be in the world free of pain and how to give that to myself because I didn't get the childhood I wanted and my early adult life wasn't fun. It wasn't the way I wanted. I didn't get to dream and live the life I wanted to live. And so I'm doing it now. It's never too late. And so I'm creating the life I want and that's what keeps me motivated. That that thought of he or they can't have all of me. They had me in my past, they can't have me now and I'm going to find whatever resources that can allow me to fully connect to myself and being in the world and celebrate the beautiful experience of life energy. And that's the mantra that I live by, that... I'm going to listen to my deep life energy that wants to live and engage fully and feel deeply and be willing to take risks and show my vulnerability and show my strength and be the way I wanted my family and community to be. I want to be that person. And so the the advice that I would give someone um, that is in an abusive relationship, that's a really big question and... I didn't know I was in an abusive relationship when I was in it. I knew it wasn't okay what I was living with, but I didn't know it was abuse. I was used to being neglected and my feelings and needs being ignored and not being worth paying attention to. So I had a lot of shame about speaking up and making myself part of the picture and being visible. And so for me, the advice that I give is not just to people that are trapped or feel in an unhealthy relationship, but for those around them to be able to speak 
and say, hey, I love you. What's going on for you? How can I help? And for the person that isn't happy in their relationship, you don't have to label it as abuse. You can just go, hey, what do I need right now? And who do I know that is skilled enough to help me because I can't do it on my own? I couldn't do it on my own. I really recommend seeing a therapist who's skilled in trauma, in how the brain works and how the body works. So don't be alone. I was so terrified when I was a child. And if only I had been able to get myself into therapy years earlier, my children could have had a different childhood and I could have had a different early adult life instead of waiting till I'm a lot older. So that's my fearless story. Constantly new risks now. I've just written a book about the wolf in a suit, my story as a child, as an adult and as a psychotherapist about abuse. And I am loving celebrating life now. I love so many things about life. Um, So much to tell you. Um, Maybe we can connect another time. Best wishes in your fearless journey. Bye. Mm -hmm.